Hey everybody, welcome to episode 7 of the Blueprints to C++ programming series. Today we are covering the TMAC basics. So like the last two episodes with the T-Array and T-Set, this will be a short video, so let's have a look at the outline. What we are covering today is, like in the other episodes, we are comparing the Blueprint function calls to C++, we have a look at the iteration types, then we are having a recap of the most important functions of the T-Map, and then the return of the tip of the day, because I think for this episode or for the T-Map, there's one special thing I want to show, and that fits the tip of the day. So let's have a look at blueprints. So here we can see we have a T-Map that has an integer as a key and a factor as value. And the possibilities in blueprints are you can add based on a key, you can add a vector, you can get the length, then you can get an array with all the keys in it, or you can get an array with all the values in it. Then you can check if that map contains a certain key. You can find the value based on a key, remove the value based on the key, and clear the whole map. So this is the basic or the basic functionalities that you can use in preprints with a map. So like I've shown you in the last episode with the T-Set, where the T-Set actually uses a blueprint function library for calling all these functions, the map does the same thing. Like its target is the blueprint map library. So these are specific C++ calls in that blueprint function library. And in C++, these operations, they will be made on directly on the map. So let's have a look at C++ and how these functions are done in C++. So you define a T-map like this. You have to define the key and the value type. Then with add, you can add an element with the index and a new element. And one thing that is not or that I haven't found yet in blueprints is the append function. So you can create a map and append this map to another map. But I might be wrong, but this is how you do it in, in C++. Then the length in blueprints is the num, like you've seen in all the other collection classes. Then getting a value out based on a key, it's with the bracket operator. So similar to the T-Array, you can access the element directly, either uh, with the key in the, with the map or with an index when it comes to the T-Array, for example. Then one thing that Blueprints uses a lot is the keys, because that's the only way how to iterate over a map in Blueprints that I know of, So, which we will cover in a few minutes when we get to iteration. So in Blueprints, it's called keys, and here it's get keys. And what you need to do is you need to specify an array and pass it as a parameter to that get keys, because this function will fill your array with the key values and it returns the number of keys it found or the uh, number of unique keys in that map. The same with values. So you would define also a T array for the values with the specific type, of course, like the keys are integer, so you need to specify integer. The value is an F vector, so you need to specify this like this. And then you will call, you will need to call the generate value array function and pass in the values and it doesn't return a integer like the get keys does. Then next, the find and contain section. So what we can do is, let's say we specify a key and or we have a key and we call contains and see if the key is available in the map. And then we have find, which you can use to get the value, or you can also use it as a kind of contains to see if the, the map contains that specific key. Find in blueprints is the only way to access an element in the map, but like we've seen here in C++, we can access it directly with the bracket operator on that map. In blueprints, the only way to get a value based on a key is the find method. What he uh, we can do in C++ here is also, like I mentioned, use it to find out if the key exists in that map. So we will get a pointer back. And if that pointer is, let's say, that it's the same way to, to write. 
null pointer, but to, to make it more clear. So if the vector is not equals null pointer, then it actually exists. And so it exists in the map and you can access it directly after that check. If you would access it here and the key doesn't exist, then you would get an, an error. So that's why you need to check, does it contain? And then you can access it or you use find and then you get the vector back. And like I shown in the TSET episode where you get the vector back and you can dereference it to get the actual vector or use the arrow operator to access the value. And then we have remove and clear. So you can remove the entry by passing in the key, or you can remove all entries by calling empty. And now with iteration, let's have a look in blueprints. So I'm only using a for loop right now, just to show you how it's done in blueprints or how it's most often done. You need to get the keys array to be able to iterate over the map. And then you need to call find to get the value back. And you can even use like a branch to check if it has been found or not. So the same thing that we did with the pointer and checking for null pointer. And this is the way you do it in blueprints for iteration in C++. We, like we've seen in the other collection classes, we have three different types of iteration, a standard for loop, like you've seen here. We have a range-based loop and a loop using iterators. So let's have a look. For the standard for loop, it's only possible with the keys array, like you've seen in blueprints, so it's the same thing. You get the keys from the map, and then you can iterate over each key. You get the key and access the map with that key to get the value back. Then you can use the value. For range-based loop, it's my preferred way for iteration over maps. So you define a const t pair, for example, which has the same key the same specification like the map, like what we have defined, integer and vector, like the key and the value. So you need to specify a T pair, and it's the key value pair, that's what KVP stands for. And then you just, like you've seen it in the set or in the array, just the colon and the map, and then you can iterate over it. And to access the key, you just call kvp.key, and to access the value, kvp.value. That's a lot easier and better, I think, than getting the keys array. So you need to create a new array, fill it with the keys, get it back, then iterate over it to get the key and then access the map with the key. And instead of here, you can just access the key and value just by looping through. The same range space with the auto keyword like we've seen in the last two episodes. So it's the same, but I must say in, in C sharp, I used the var keyword a lot, which is the same or similar as the auto keyword. But here I'm, I must really say it's a lot cleaner to really specify the, the real types than using auto. It's more cleaner, I think, and clearer to read than using auto, but it's up to you what you use. And then we have the iterator, similar to what we've shown with the set and the array. So you create either an iterator or a const iterator, and then iterate over the map. And then you, for the key, you call it.key or it.call the functions, basically to get the key and the values back. The same with this one. So these are the iteration types. Before we come to the tip of the day, let's recap what we've seen in the slides. So this is, this slide like the others again, will be available on my GitHub account. So I will link this in the description so that you can download these slides and always use them as a reference or, and so on. As recap, this is the blueprint functionalities, add, length, contains, and so on. And this is how you do it in C++. Then the standard for loop again, getting the keys, iterating the keys to get the value. Then we have the range-based for loop, like we've seen in the example, and the iterator types. And here we have the important functions like add, append, which doesn't exist in blueprints, get keys, and so on and so on. So for you as a reference to keep now to the tip of the day. I thought about something when 
this was in the beginning when, when I started and stumbled upon using a map and having a pointer type value, like for example, our cone actor that we created in earlier episodes. And we use that in the T map as a value type. And then you're wondering, okay, find returns a pointer. And so you actually get a pointer to a pointer back. And you also, like the, the others as well, need to dereference the pointer to get the pointer to your type or your class back. And there are two different ways you can do it. You can either do it in one line, like putting the dereference directly after find, or you can do it in two lines. So to show you in code real quickly, I did a small example in blueprints that you often find it's a new function call that, that we can also that you can also see how it's done. Is you get, let's say we have a lot of cone actors in the scene, and you call the get all actors of class of a specific type, which we have BP cone right here, and we get an array back with all the cone actors in the scene. And then we would iterate over it and add basically the index as the key and the value, the, the found actor as a value into the map. And the way you can see it here, like you get the cone actor, it's using the find method and it's calling the test func. So it's a simple example, but what I've seen several times been using myself and where you need to get all the actors in the scene of a certain class and then maybe add them to a map or to an array or, or whatever. So I want to use this exam short example for the tip of the day to show you how it's done in C++. The bonus is like, you can see how the get all actors of class function is called in C++. You can see it here, target is gameplay statics. It's another blueprint function library that has so many functionalities, so many functions, useful stuff in there that you will come by many, many times there you have the chance to get the current game state, to get the player controller and all that stuff. So gameplay statics is a real important function library to use. And let's see how it's done in C++. So here we define a T array of actors. And this is the call to the get all actors of class from the U gameplay statics. And to not get compiler errors, you need to include the H file the header file of the gameplay statics function library. And this is found under Kismet. So a lot of stuff is found under Kismet, components, and so on. But we will see that in the future. So let's continue down here. Tip of the day. So usually these gameplay statics or many gameplay or blueprint function libraries, they need the world. So you need to just call get world, which is needed as a parameter. And then the get all actors of class needs the class type, not a reference, but class. And usually how you do it is you take the class name, colon, colon, and then call static class. This returns the class for the class object for that cone actor class. It's a bit weird, but we will see this once we cover T subclass of and how to specify a class in blueprints that we can then use in C++ to spawn some actors and all that stuff, good stuff. So this will come soon in future episodes, but let's just say this is how it's done. So we get all actors and then we pass the array to be filled with all the actors. And this is like with the get keys from the map, this is something that you will see a lot when programming with the game framework that you have to pass in arrays that get filled and so on. Okay, so we call that function, we get the actors back, and then we define a cone actor map with integer as a key and the cone actor star as a value. We get iterate over the actors, and what we need to do usually in, in here or what you may be seen in blueprints with casting to a specific type, we need to do in here because get all actors of class has an array of only a actor. A, a, a cone actor inherits from actor, so it's an actor. But we need to cast to it to be able to add it to the map and or if we would need to, let's say, call some functions of the cone actor and so on. So this is how you do it. You call cast and define the type to cast to and the actor itself or the 
element from the array. Then we get that cone actor back. But the cast, let's say if maybe couldn't find any actors or something was weird, so you need to cast could fail, and then this would be a null pointer. So we have to check if the cone actor is valid. And then we add it to the map. And then here we can see, and this is the tip of the day, actually with the find method that I wanted to show. And once you call find with a key, you get a pointer to a pointer to an a cone actor. And then to get the actual class or the actual pointer back, you need to dereference it. Or what you could do is like in here and comment this out and just do it in one line. And then you can check if the cone actor that you get back is valid and then call, for example, test function. So that's it for today. So like I said, small video again, although this was a little bit longer than the other two, because TMAP is a bit more, not complicated, but there, there are some certain things that I wanted to let you know and show you that you don't stumble upon things and wonder how can we do this. So the next video will either be how to create a struct or an enum. And I'm also planning like a series or small video series where we take an older tutorial from Epic and which is 100% blueprints and then we convert this to C++ and make it work. So look forward to that. Thank you for watching and I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and like the videos and if you have questions leave it in the comments. I'm glad to answer anything that you have problems with or whatever. So thanks and see you in the next video. Bye bye.